On Tuesday, Hezbollah leader Syed Hassan Nasrallah delivered his annual address on the occasion of the Day of Wounded and Captured. Nasrallah's speech was of significance at a time when Hezbollah and Israel have been exchanging fire regularly while stopping short of an outright escalation. Over 250 Lebanese, mainly civilians, have been killed in Israeli strikes and Hezbollah has retaliated by striking consistently at Israeli military targets. So what did Nasrallah say and what is the current situation on the Lebanon-Israel border? We go to Abdul to find out. Abdul Hassan Syed Nasrallah's speeches are uh, very looked forward to in uh, both that region and across the world because the stand Hezbollah is likely to take a very uh, you know, a dynamic situation, a very, a very delicately poised situation at this point of time. So, what was the occasion of his speech and what did he say regarding what was happening in West Asia? Well, uh, Nasrullah was speaking on the occasion of uh, one of the, you can say, annual celebrations or day of commemoration related to the, the fighters, Hezbollah fighters, uh, wounded or uh, in, in uh, captivity somewhere. So in memory of them, the, this annual day is celebrated in, uh, or you can say commemorated, sorry, in uh, uh, among uh, Hezbollah fighters in Lebanon. Uh, he was basically on this particular occasion, he was, uh, of, apart from the fact that he may remembered the uh, you can scores of Hezbollah fighters who were wounded, uh, who have been wounded since the, in the Israeli attacks, which, were, which have been carried out inside Lebanon, particularly in southern Lebanon, since October 7 and 8. Uh, and the numbers are quite high, around hundreds of them. Uh, so uh, in kind of that, and uh, apart from that, of course, uh, uh, it is also a kind of occasion to basically uh, uh, kind of uh, talk about uh, the war, which is basically Hezbollah claims Israel has waged against uh, the Lebanese people as uh, in, you can say, in connection with their war in Gaza against the Palestinian people. Uh, so uh, uh, that is the occasion on which basically uh, Nasrallah was speaking. And if you see, his speech is basically addressing the basic uh, uh, issues which basically have been speculated uh, in the uh, regional media and in the global media ever since the war in Palestine, the war in Gaza, Israeli war in Gaza started. Whether Hezbollah will be a part of uh, a regional escalation, whether uh, Hezbollah will be dragged into the war, whether the war will extend to uh, the neighboring countries. And in the on the earlier, if you compare this speech with the speeches he had given in the past, which uh, uh, last month and uh, previously, uh, it seems that this is the most, uh, you can say, radical assertion of Hezbollah's role in uh, uh, in the uh, in the entire uh, situation which is unfolding, which has been unfolding in last 130 days in the region. Uh, Nasrallah said that Hezbollah's uh, kind of participation in the uh, in solidarity with the Palestinians is its moral duty and it has been doing so and it will continue to do so until the war in Gaza stops and it ha it is independent to of course related in a way but independent to Israeli attacks on southern Lebanon because that is also uh, whether uh, uh, one likes it or not that is also a part of uh, the the escalation which is happening at this moment between uh, Hezbollah and Israel. Yeah. Right. Uh, Abdul, also in between this talk of some French proposal uh, that has come up, what is the reason for France to come up with this kind of a proposal at this stage? And what is it? What are the terms and conditions, so to speak? Well, uh, we have discussed this before that uh, the US and its allies in the West do not want uh, uh, kind of Israel to be trapped into a regional war. Uh, Though whether Israel wants the same thing or not, that is a separate question altogether. Uh, and therefore, they think that Hezbollah's uh, passivity is important uh, in the northern uh, Lebanon. And for that, uh, French delegates have been vis uh, delegates has been visiting, uh, sorry, have been visiting uh, Lebanon ever since the war began. And apparently, they have proposed that um, uh, Hezbollah will withdraw from southern Lebanon in return of a negotiation on finalizing the border between uh, Israel and Lebanon that would mean the addressing uh, that would mean addressing the 
status of Seba Farm, a status of different other uh, villages on the border which are uh, disputed and kind of fixing the border. But uh, 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 of course, that would mean a, a kind of 10 day ceasefire on the border and, and then carrying forward the negotiation. But the details of the uh, proposal which were, pro uh, which were presented by the French have been disputed by Hezbollah which basically has claimed that they are not withdrawing uh, at this moment from the southern Lebanon and that there, there is no talk of any uh, ceasefire uh, between uh, Hezbollah and Israel until there is a ceasefire in Gaza. Uh, and in fact, it basically, uh, Nasrallah quotes uh, Israel's defense minister, uh, Yoav Gallant's uh, statement, which he made a few days back, that even if there is a ceasefire in Gaza, uh, the Israel will continue to attack Lebanon. And therefore, he said that if that happens, of course, uh, Hezbollah will escalate in its attacks on northern uh, uh, Israel. And that would mean the displacement of millions of uh, Israeli settlers, which are uh, hundreds of thousands are already displaced because of the uh, Hezbollah retaliation to the Israeli attack. And this, if uh, Israel tries to escalate the situation, they will face the consequences. That's exactly what uh, Nasrallah is saying. So uh, he said that there is no, uh, Nasrallah claimed that there is no uh, uh, point of negotiating with Israel at this moment until there is a ceasefire in Gaza and, uh, and there is some attempt mo uh, made to address the root causes of the conflict in the region. By the way, that he mentioned that Israel has been the root cause for the regional uh, conflicts for the problems in the region and there is a high this is high time to address that problem it it would mean the addressing the palestinian question and the palestinian statehood right, thank you so much for the update a disastrous landslide in southern philippines has brought attention to the mining industry in the country and the region more than a week after the landslide which occurred near a gold mine in marco in the davao de oro province rescue operations have given up hope of finding any survivors the death toll continues to rise with dozens still feared buried under the debris. Environmental groups have called for an independent investigation into the disaster and even the shutting down of the mine. We talk to Anish for details. Anish, thanks so much for joining us. Before going into some of the demands of the environmentalist groups, could you maybe take us to what itself happened in the Philippines with the landslide? What exactly was the toll, etc.? Yeah, so uh, of this month, uh, there was uh, a landslide that happened uh, an area that is usually uh, the landing site for uh, you know workers to the gold mine in uh, the Wawde Oro region that where this uh, landslide happened. Now this area has been uh, suffering through like continuous rains for days before the landslide actually happened. But this is uh, a largely mining town uh, known for its gold mine, and uh, the when it actually did happen, um, if you see the death toll. And also the number of people missing, most of them are uh, workers to the mines. So it actually uh, happened very close to the mines, uh, even though it is not uh, technically part of the mines itself. Now, uh, it has been more than a week now. Uh, the uh, you know government officials have just given up hope at this point. Uh, they do not expect survivors. Uh, what they ex uh, now it has. Uh, turned into from a rescue mission to a retrieval mission and the death toll has reached about 71 from the last report that we're seeing uh, as of today, uh, February 14. Now, so it's a, it's a massive uh, disaster in itself. Uh, while uh, there has been no talks about how it happened, why it happened, uh, the conditions uh, around this landslide, uh, there are definitely voices that are raising concerns about the fact that there was a mine so close to uh, the place, uh, to the disaster site. And also, obviously, for the fact that uh, a place like this, which is, uh, you know, which sees frequent rains, uh, uh, is, is a place where a massive mine uh, was constructed. So... Uh, We'll get into the, the you know the demands later, but definitely from the official standpoint, uh, they are trying to avoid mentions of the mine itself. Even though initial reports uh, did have that, uh, uh, you know, later reports and later communications from officials just did not want to consider that. 
and also Apex Mining, uh, which is the one who uh, held the gold mine in question, uh, uh, continue to insist that this is this happened outside of its mining uh, premises, and it wasn't. Uh, but it, it will definitely continue to cooperate with the local authorities and whatever. So there is some level of try- attempt to take away the mine from you know, uh, culpability at this point in time. And that is something that comes more, uh, to be more suspect uh, from uh, whatever we know for, so far. Ranish, now coming to the key point, what are environmental groups uh, demanding at this point of time considering this brutal death toll? Uh, right now, uh, in, in immediate measures need to be taken, including uh, compensation for uh, casualties for uh, to the kin of those who died so far, including uh, those who have suffered injuries. Uh, you know the covering of medical costs. Now there hasn't there has been talks uh, so far from officials that there will be uh, compensation or at, at least uh, you know support to the victims of the disaster. Uh, but there has been no uh, official uh, policy of how much uh, they're going to uh, how much support they're going to offer to the victims itself. Uh, on top of that, uh, you do uh, trade union movements, uh, environmentalists, and you know grassroots movement. We have to remember it's not just the environmentalists because this this is we are we are talking about grassroots organizers as well and trade unions. Uh, they are demanding a very clear, independent probe on the matter and investigation into uh, you know the circumstances that actually caused the landslide because the landslide doesn't really just happen because of rains. It's uh, there are environmental factors to it, and we have to ascertain whether or not these environmental factors uh, could have been mitigated if you know the mining company or the mining site itself were more responsible with how they uh, conducted their activities. On top of that, uh, there are definitely some levels of uh, calls to shut down or at least a rethink of mining activities across Philippines. Now, Philippines is a tropical country. It is one of those places which, uh, you know, every year there is a hurricane or uh, a cyclone that hits uh, much of the region. But it is also one of the places which sees significant mining activities. And obviously, this uh, uh, the fact that this disaster happened so close around this uh, time when there is all this talk about a constitutional amendment or a charter change, on especially on the economic clauses, which includes protections uh, against foreign capital interventions on uh, industries that includes mining. Uh, this is something that really, like Philippines, it, it should uh, push Philippines as a nation to rethink its policies, rethink not just constitutional change, but also rethink how it wants to conduct uh, the entire mining uh, sector as a whole. Because this is not the first time that workers, mining workers have been killed in disasters, natural or otherwise. Uh, this there is something that is far wider that needs to be taken into account, and that is uh, precisely what uh, movements and uh, you know trade unions and environmentalist groups are calling for at the moment. Thank you so much for that update. And that's all we have in today's daily debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. In the meanwhile, do visit our website peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.